Yeah, man. So, shit, I'm from, um, you know, Inglewood, California, and um, football always been my passion. And um, with football, I started making highlight tapes for all my teammates. Um, that That's how I started editing um, back in the day. So I put, um, <laughs> I don't know how I did this, but I put two VCRs together and a PlayStation 1 to input my sound, and that's how I start, started editing. But, um, yeah, man, so but football has always been my passion. So, um after my football career, basically, I still want, I wanted to tell stories and I got into music, telling stories through music. And then I'm not really like, I don't like performing, but I like writing, you know what I'm saying? So then from that, I start, you know, shooting my own vi music videos. Then I start shooting my boys music videos to try to, you know, to learn. And basically that, that was like my film school. Uh, and that's how I got into filming by, by telling stories. I love telling stories. That's great, man. That's great. So, so the, the interview is uh, about you, all of the projects you may have done, some of the projects you've done, past, some of the projects you plan on doing, but mainly contact you. Had a huge in that in the film you put out uh, after the black man. Please give me some more information on that for the fans as well. Wait, what's that? I'm sorry, I, I didn't even hear you. No, nah, the, the movie Afro Black, your movie oh, okay. Afro Black. Yeah, okay. Give me some man, more information I, I, on that. <laughs> yeah, man, that the Afro Black that was on um, my first short film. That was the first real short film that I shot. And um, I love like black exploitation movies. I love, you know, I love comedy. Oh, Kung Fu Hustle. That that's one of my favorite movies. You know what I'm saying? So I I um, kind of rolled with like that concept of Kung Fu Hustle and. Um, Black dino, um, black dynamite, um, <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah, just yeah, that black exploitation type feel, old school. So I already knew a lot of people probably wouldn't get it, you know what I mean? But um, it was fun. That was like one of the best. That that was one of the best um, on set. Um, just just comedy, man. I like everybody loved it. And after I shot Afro Black, I really started loving film. I'm like, okay, this is what I was supposed to be doing. I thought, I thought, you know, NFL, you know, was what I was supposed to be doing. But when I shot Afro Black, that's when I was like, okay, this, yeah, this is it. I'm going to tell you something. I got I to gotta tell you something. And I know we spoke earlier, man. Um, and I, I gave you some, some, some props for, for how you uh, went forward with that project. But look at here. When I saw it, I'm not going to lie. When I first saw it, I was like, man, this is somebody just playing around. This ain't this ain't going to be, you know, no full-fledged movie that I'm actually enjoying get something out of. So I, I started listening to the script, and the way it was put together, it was first off, it was known that it was a comedy, right? The way, the way they started talking. And second, <laughs> second, it made you want to know what was going to happen next. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, um, and in spite of them playing around, in spite of the... the um, you know, the script being the way that it was, it, it engaged you to make you want to see what was going to happen or what was going to be said next. Even if you wasn't listening, you wanted to know what was going to happen next. And exactly. um, the way you put it together, man, I'm not going to lie, the first thing I thought of was, man, this is this is like the hood version of Quentin Tarantino, man. And I told you that. <laughs> I told you that because the way yep. you put it together, the cinematic, how cinematic, the cinematic feel that it had and, 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 and um, you know, and the, the wardrobe and, and the, um, you know the the script, the way the way they they put the things together, and how you change the scenes. And I'm not gonna get into much detail because I want people to go and watch it. But yeah, man, it had the '70s feel to it, but it was Quentin Tarantino style. Yep. And and um, he normally yep. does action films with a lot of gore and stuff like that. But if he ever was a touch of black exploitation film, I feel like it would have been just like yours, bro. I'm just being honest with you, man. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Yeah, really. that, that's fun. that's that's funny because um, so from writing that, like I really wanted somebody to um, get a hold of it and be like, man, let's make this a movie. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel that it really could be a movie. But, um, yeah, man, I love Quentin Tarantino. I love um, black exploitation films. You know, I, I love the whole kung fu type feel. You know what I'm saying? I, I love just a lot of different genres. So I, I thought, right. like, man, let's start it off with this, you know, comedy um, and, and get this shit started, you know, with the film business. And that's how I got started with that one. Hey, you did a good, you did an amazing job, man. Like I said, that's what made me wanted to uh, link up with you and discuss other projects and this as well. But let me ask you a few more questions about that one too, because like I said, that's the base. I want to hear about your other projects as well. With that being said, um, you know, where did you get the actors from, man? Because the buddy that played the leading role, man, he did his thing. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know if he came from another movie, and it wasn't you know, a comedy, so I didn't know whether or not you know he had any previous. Uh, you know, um, roles in any other films or what, by the way, it went down. So I'm just curious about how did, how did you pick your characters? 
Who, Afro Black? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my boy, yeah, Demar Jones, man. That's that's like my brother, man. That, um, yeah, he he's, he's a, a funny good dude, dude, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a he's a good dude, and um, you know what I'm saying. So he's been acting for a while, but like we never. So basically, like when I created Inglewood Films, um, I was like, man, let's let's do our own. Like let's make our own way. Like we ain't gotta wait on a motherfucker and and be like um, a token. Like I'm tired, I'm tired of like, you know what I'm saying? My cat's been, my people been in token and stuff. So th that was his like first lead role. You know what I mean? That was his first lead role. Yeah. And um, that, that's what we do. We, we try to build, try to build our own, man, without, yeah. um, like I didn't have film school, man. I didn't have no film school. I I um, learned crazy. from, I learned from basically just trial and error, just shooting and shooting, wow. shooting my boys. And you know what I'm saying? Just learning, never, I didn't know how to like do visual effects. I, Wow. practice Bro. so yeah my boy demar man he's a good dude he's um i got him in the lead role to my last short film that man we yeah. like 100 percent in the um, film festival um okay. arts film festival tour right mm -hmm. now and it's dope and you know and that's that's what we do we you know try to i try to you know create our own you know with our peoples and you know just diverse man no no yeah, tokens yeah. on our, on my set like for real no that, that's dope man so so every everybody was uh pretty much a friend uh that you knew or somebody yeah. you know, a friend of a friend something like that is that what you saying? yeah bro yeah man people yeah pe yeah. people rock with me so they they always like want to work with me i love that man i like i love that like everybody always reaching out you know want to work with me and it's like damn like that's crazy because i'm just i'm just like learning you know what i mean basically starting off like when i was starting off you know people a lot of people reached out and wanted to do something with me well, if they reached out after the first movie, they, I know the reason for that, man. You got a lot of talent. You said you ain't had no training, no schooling, man. That's phenomenal, man. But with that being said, what what do you, you know, what 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 do you think the hardest part about filming it was? About filming? Um, yeah, you know, filming that bro. particular movie. Filming that particular Afro movie. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Like you know the, but but that's what I love. I, I love doing shit that's hard. You know what I mean? Like um, right. everybody can't do film because you gotta you gotta plan. You gotta um. Set, you gotta set goals. You gotta uh, prepare. You got it, it's a lot of work. So that I love the whole process, man. But yeah, everything is hard, man, because you have to get everybody together on the same page. You got That's you right. can't have an ego. Like I, I never like I don't I don't have an ego. So you know what I'm saying. I'm never. It, it's all even if you holding the damn stand for me, like you fucking important. You know that's right. that's how that's how I get down on like you know on my sets and shit. So oh, that's good. Um, that's good. just bringing it, yeah, bringing that fun chemistry and family type vibe to the set makes everything go go so much smoother so um damar jones who plays afro black and um brandon who plays um um damn Pim. what's his name um i forgot his name i can't remember damn, what's his name on that uh in yeah, afro black i forgot oh honey nuts okay HD. okay yeah yeah hd so brand new play hd that was their first time that they met that was the first time that they met when, wow. they, when we filmed and okay. they connected and vibe so so hard, like they was like really clowning, like you know, yeah, in between yeah. takes, like it was dope. So from there, like like they're still tight from that day. So I, I love like you know bringing people together and connecting, man, connecting you know different people from from everywhere. Right, so right. That, that's what I love about you know filming and shit. No, that that's good, man. That's good. And I saw I saw how they connected um, on, on film and and how well they worked together because some of that stuff. Um, didn't I didn't know if they were winging it or not. You know what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't know if they was reading the script or they were winging it, but because they had uh they were in sync with each other, it didn't matter because it yeah. was relevant to, you know, not for the movie or whatever, how things went along, it didn't really matter. So that's good to hear, man. That's dope that they, they had a relationship like that outside of the film because it showed, you know what I'm saying? I, I was yeah. assuming that you just gave me a confirmation on that. So that that's dope, man. Well who actually wrote it though? Who had the idea oh, for it? I wrote it. it? I wrote, wrote it, yeah. It? Um I wrote it, and then um, it's funny because I was at work. I was I was still working at, at the same company I'm at now, and um, I was just coming up with some different ideas. My, the boy who's who's a, the narrator, like he worked with me, and he was walking by one day, and he was doing his voice, this like southern type voice, and I was like, "Oh shit, that'll be dope! I got an idea!" Like, bam, I got an idea. I'm gonna use you as a narrator, and that's how like the shit just came together. And um, it it was fun, man. Um, it it was different. It was fun, and I knew a lot of people wasn't gonna get it. I knew a lot of people was like, "Oh, their acting wasn't all this and that," but they didn't get the whole concept of 
black exploitation, you know, comedy. And I knew that and I didn't give a fuck. Cause mm-hmm. so after I stopped giving a fuck what people think, bro, I was, my creativity was just like, it's a rap. You know what I mean? So that, yeah. that's how I am now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to the other projects after seeing that one. Cause I didn't, I remember I talked to you earlier and I was like, bro, you got a resume, man. What other stuff you, and I was shocked how many other films that you had completed since that one. Um, after I watched it. It was so good, and for you to find out it was your first one, like I said, man, that, that motivates me to see what else you got, bro. I'm not going to lie. I'm definitely going to check it out. But that being said, with your other projects you got coming out, man, make sure you let me know. I want to make sure that you okay. know that you got a platform to promote that. I want to make sure you're aware that you yes, got a sir. platform to promote that. Let me know, and, and I'll, I'll get it up, and we'll, we'll get some views to I appreciate it. So that. I appreciate that, man. Absolutely, absolutely. So with that being said, man, give us some more information about those projects, some of your previous projects and what you got coming up. Man, I so I got a lot of I got some films published on Amazon Prime right now. I got um Behind the Smiles. It's a um it's a show. It's about um, you know, what's really going on behind the smile. So it's real and raw. It's um, you know, showing cause cause as black men, well, we gotta hide our feelings and always gotta be tough and always gotta be this and that, you know what I'm saying? And then deep down we fucking hiding all that shit and then that shit end up fucking us up so basically um what behind the smiles is 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 letting out like whatever fucking whatever you see on social media you know we doing this and that and um like the first episode uh, my boy justin he played for utah he played end up going to dallas and had all this shit happening to him but you know a lot of people didn't know what he um explained on the first episode you know what i mean and um it's real shit is um like mental health, like um, so I got behind the smiles, like it's dope, man. It's, I think everybody need to um, watch that. Um, I have, what else? Oh, I have Saya. That's a um action sci-fi film. Oh, look, look at this. I, I just got these comic books made for it. Oh, that's you know dope. what I mean? Okay. So, so, yeah. so me, like I try to stay creative and do shit outside the box. Yeah. So I got a host a comic book of like my movie, bro. You know what I mean? Wow. So, yeah, you feel me? Wow. Huh. That's yeah. of the actual movie that you can watch on Prime. Yeah, bro. That's and, crazy. And it's right off the off my script. You know what I mean? Man, that's so, that's dope. So, man. so that that's the kind of shit I'm on, and and it, it, it's me, you know, trying to be creative, like on my own and learning shit on my own and doing shit. Cause I I know if I keep just creating and because I love doing it, the money gonna eventually come, and eventually I'm gonna have a budget, and then when I get a budget, like it's on. You know what I mean? So that's I just work. I don't complain about shit. I don't, you know I. I I know I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just work. I work daily. So I got Saya. Like, that's a dope flick. It's on Amazon Prime right now. Um, what else I got? I got some more in gold. See, it's, a, you know what I'm saying? I, I deal with a lot of different shit. That's a comedy. Um, it's it's um, based off the Polynesian culture of Samoan gold, which is tuna. Um, it, yeah, it's, it, it was a fun project to do. Um, I got Dear Lord on Amazon Prime. Yeah, Dear Lord. Sheesh. And then the shoebox, that's the film that I just finished. And it's still in the um still having a festival run right now. That's like a hundred percent in the festival. It's about um PTSD. About how PTSD happens um before like when we're kids getting abused or getting bullied or you know what I'm saying? It's real life. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's real life, raw shit. So so me, yeah, man, I'm I, I try to, you know speak with a message i try to tell stories with a message so even the sci-fi action film you know it, of course it's like sci-fi action like she got superpowers and stuff but it's a message behind it um it's about um sex trafficking it's about and how shit is corrupt and she's yeah yeah she's coming yeah it's a coming to age story of finding out who you are and who you're supposed okay. to be that's what you know what i'm saying so it's always about um telling that message Man, that, that's good that you switch it up like that, because in my opinion, you kind of like just, uh, you know, taking your talent uh, that much further, like trying to figure out what, what you, like you said, you said you like challenges, so it makes sense for you to do with different type of genres like that, man. And that's interesting to see how you transition from something like a, a black exploitation comedy, you know, to a sci-fi and, and like a heartfelt movie. <laughs> but that, that's interesting to hear about. And I'm going to go on Amazon Prime to uh, to check it out, because most of the films that I, that I uh, see, you know, um, or outside of uh, those type of platforms, but I'm, I'm definitely gonna do my due diligence and go check it out, man. See how you know, see how you put it together, and um, um, I'm gonna give you opportunity in just a few minutes to tell everybody where to go see those films as well, because I want people to be aware of your resume, especially if they take the initiative to go and watch um, 
um, Afro Black after after seeing this man, because that that's a dope film. I don't want to take no credit away from it because of your other projects, man. Because even though it's your first one, and even <laughs> though you were the the least skilled at what you're doing now when you did it, like I said, I knew it was black so exploitation after five minutes of watching it, man. That's what got me through. <laughs> like after after they started wing, I don't know if they wing or not. I mean, I'm going to let you answer that question in a minute, too, because I said that. You ain't never giving no confirmation. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, when, when they started talking, I was just like, man, what is this? And then after about five minutes, I laughed a little bit. And then, like, man, after that, yeah. I, didn't care. I didn't care what they were saying because I saw it was going somewhere, and I wanted to see it to the end. So I think other people, when they take a look at it, are going to want the same thing. But now answer that question for me. Were, were they reading off a script, or did they read the script? Like, you know what? We got this. How'd that work? Oh, that. Yeah, that, most of it was a script. Yeah, most of it they was reading um, from straight from the script. But um, HD Honey Dick when he was um, about to fight with Afro Black, that was him winging it. it was like, oh, I'm about to give you what he say. <laughs> yeah, like like when they was about to scrap. Yeah, that was him winging it. Like yeah, okay. like okay. that's what I'm saying. Like they just clicked. But most of it was um, they they um, stuck to the script. You know what I mean? It it was dope. Yeah, it, it was a fun time. Yeah, that was like one of my funnest projects straight up. Nah, that that came out. That came out real well, man. That came out real well. So, so, uh, what what was your um, what was your motivation after you after you did um Afro Black to do something different instead of staying in that same band? Was it the challenge, or was it, you know, your difficulties with that type of comedy? Like most people, they they kind of go from one movie to the next, but their their feel is pretty much the same way. You just genres completely. What made you do that? Man, so after Afro Black, we um we made Don't Let Her Out. That's on Amazon Prime too. Don't let her out. See, I, bro, I got so many um different genres. So from from the black exploitation, I went to a straight horror. Um, it's called Don't Let Her Out about uh, um letting a demon uh, um a demon trapped in a mirror, basically a, like a little like a witch. We did that, and um so what really got everything started. Um, cause after all this, I did a feature. So I showed, so I rented out a theater and I showed, um, Afro black, um, don't let her out. And like a music video, you know what I'm saying? In a the theater. And it was all so different. Like it was a different whole, whole different element for everybody. And it was fun as fuck. Like it was dope. So from that, I was like, damn, okay. Me and my boys was just came to me and my boy um Chappelle actually came together was like man let's do a feature film bro like like right after the theater we sat at the bar because it was a bar in the um, movie theater sat at the bar and we was like let's let's do a feature bro like yeah I think we ready you know because all that was just practice practicing so yeah man so after Afro Black shot a horror film and then um went went to a feature called Fear Level which is on Amazon Prime too um, that was the first feature, yeah, my first feature and stuff. So it was all like I said, it's all like film school learning. <laughs> That's crazy, man. And 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 you didn't take a class, not one class, man. This is just oh, you. no, I wish, nope, I wish, man, because like in, when I was in college, like so BYU does have like a dope, um, like a film film school. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a dope film school, but that wasn't even on my mind. All I was, I was just like, oh man, I'm gonna be rich off, off football. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's all I, I knew it, you know what I mean? But anyway, I ended up getting kicked out of BYU, signed with the Bengals, like right after, signed with the Bengals. But you know what I'm saying? Time was short. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's all about timing. Everything is all about timing. And um, so after getting cut, I was trying to, you know, I played for um, like arena football and stuff, but I was still trying to find my way. Like, like nah, man, like it, it you know, so it took me a while before I got into film, but when I got into it, man, I was all in. Yeah, you, you well, found your right, niche, bro, because I, I know if any of those other movies, if you took it to another level with them, man, I know I'm going to be impressed if Afro Black was the first one. <laughs> um, but thank you for allowing me to do this, to get that information for myself and also, you know, people that might be interested in what you got to say, knowing that, you know, you wrote and directed that. And, um, and hopefully they take no doubt to your other projects as well, man. So I, I do appreciate you, bro. I really do. I don't want you to think I take this. No doubt, man. So, with that being said, man, I, I appreciate give you, you for reaching out, man. For real. Oh no, no doubt, man. Look, when I when I see something online that 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 sparks my interest, that I feel like you know what I'm saying, other people need to see, then that's what I do. I, I try to I try to reach out 
to see how I can get some information so other people can know about it. But rather than me telling them, hey, you need to see this, you know, nobody's really connecting with the people that made it. Like, why, why do I need to tell them that when I can connect with you and get more information? You know what I'm saying? And right, let them, yep. I didn't know and, and give them some some um, insight on why the film was created and, and how it was put together so that they can enjoy it that much more when they go watch it for the first time. You know, if they if they saw it already, you know what I'm saying? Now they get to know the person who did it. So that, that's why I'm doing this. And I appreciate, like I said, your Sorry. support because you could have said no. You know what I'm saying? I, I've interviewed a lot of filmmakers in the past few months. I've only really uh, posted um, a few recently. Um, and I'm still editing a lot of stuff, man. But then I, I've, um, I've reached out to a few that didn't respond. So, I mean, it is what it is. But at the same time, man, for you to take the time and give me 30 minutes to an hour, whatever, to talk about your film, you know what I'm saying? That's love. And, and I want to give that back. That's why I said next time you come out with something, you know, that's what the platform is about. You know what I'm saying? It's your project. I want to promote it. All I'm doing is trying to create uh, uh, create value by way of communicating you guys um, means of what you're doing to people who actually enjoy what you do. 